community is really important to you as well, right? Yeah, and um, so public spaces where people, I think, develop a sense of the public good and their responsibilities in maintaining it and enriching it. You know, when I walk through these buildings, I'm always reminded it's just different nationalities, ethnicities, religions, diversity of perspective, thought, life experiences. You get to share those in spaces like this. And I think that's part of preparing you to be a, a citizen that is confident and comfortable in navigating of those situations that you'll face, some that may feel similar, but some will be quite different than, than you may have known in a, in a neighborhood where you grew up. We're walking underneath a residence hall, which is pretty cool. Um, tell me a little bit about how you all got creative in funding so many new residence halls in a very short amount of time. Yeah. So when I arrived here and I said, how quickly can you have the first residence hall up? Uh, they said, uh, August of 14. And I said, you got the month right. You got to do it August of 13. That was 2000, nearly 12. Uh, I also said, how quickly can we build them? They said, well, you'll get the legislature to approve uh, one or two every four years. And I thought, gee. Um, We'll be out of the game by then, uh, knowing what our competitors are able to do. So we worked with the state, got their blessing uh, for a public-private partnership. Uh, we put it out for, for bid through an RFP. We got a great partner, publicly traded company. They came in and built these uh, quicker, more economically, and of higher quality than I think we could have done by ourselves. So we're entering now what used to be Central Hall 1 and 2. Um, this is the first hall we named for someone. It was Lyman T. Johnson, who was the first African American to attend the University of Kentucky. And uh, it's a special spot for me because on the day that we cut the ribbons here, uh, you had governor, speaker of the house, president of the senate, so many people who hold this place dear. Uh, I remember as I welcomed people, I looked out and saw my wife, which is very touching to me because uh, after I made my vestiture speech where I declared we're gonna rebuild the campus back in 2011, that night I sat by the edge of the bed and I said, why did I say that and how are we gonna do this? And she told me to go to bed you know, sort of put on my big boy pants and um, when I got up in the morning and go out and work with some great people and figure out how to do it. And so this, these are the first buildings that came up. And they also house now our, our honors neighborhood. In 2011, we admitted 50 students a year into our honors program. It was highly demanded. We turned away so many people. And this year, we we're able to expand our capacity. We're gonna cross over to the new Lewis Hall that's gonna be a, the home of our Honors College, thanks to the generosity of Tom Lewis and his wife, Jan. And we had to keep our best and brightest here in Kentucky. And Tom Lewis shared that dream and he made a tremendous commitment so that we could fulfill it. So when you see that this is finally kind of come into fruition, what, what goes through your mind? First, with everything we've done here, I have to start with appreciation. Uh, Tom Lewis, he only lived in Kentucky 10 years, although I think he's a sixth generation Kentuckian. He remembered the impact this place had on him. Uh, we'd have never been able to create a facility like this. You know, we like to say that there's no reason you need to go outside the state of Kentucky for the very best of sophisticated health care. Um, you don't need to leave Kentucky to have the very best in an honors program. And then it's also, its location is prime too, right? Because you're right next to the 90, which kind of 
shows our dining transformation as well. We haven't really talked about that. Why, why was that so important to give students so many new options? So we needed more places to eat. Uh, we needed uh, uh, more healthy options. And we needed to do it at uh, less cost. So how are you gonna do that? The University of Kentucky has a powerful brand and it's an important market that people wanna be a part of. So we put out an RFP, publicly traded companies came in here and bid for it. And, and to get our business, and they were able to lower the prices of all the food uh, options we have, they also uh, made some contributions to our academic enterprise. Patterson Hall, built in 1903, the residence hall for women. We didn't have the money to restore that. Our private partner, Aramark, contributed $10 million to that effort. It's $35 million for the 90. Dining facility on the first floor, uh, retail options on the outside. Second floor is academic space. And then through all our new academic spaces and some of the older spaces, uh, they created venues for dining. What, what is your hope for the future of this place? Well, I think it's a educational center. I think this generation, more than any, is going to have to deal with things that are a result in, 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 a, in a positive sense from advancing technology and communications and so forth, but it also presents challenges. I also think that this place is committed to tackling Kentucky's most serious problems. We haven't walked over to it, but we have a new $270 million research facility coming out of ground that is going to house the very best investigators who are focused on Kentucky's most significant health problems. Uh, we have a connector that's going to put all our research buildings together that we're calling the Appalachian Translational Trail. And in those spaces we want to take our discoveries, work with those in and of community, and try to get those uh, breakthroughs to the bedside as quickly as possible. So we can translate our discoveries into making real differences in community. We've talked about a lot today. Um, is there anything else that that you want to say for students, for parents, for faculty and staff coming back to campus this August? Any, any message or? Well, uh, it, it's been lonely without you. Uh, so I, I want to welcome you back. Uh, although I love a little quiet, it's a little too quiet. And I'm filling uh, with energy. My batteries are getting recharged. I hope yours are because we have an awesome place to fulfill a serious responsibility. I can't think of anything more profound than holding the responsibility uh, to entrust with knowledge and citizenship of the next generation of leaders. And that's why we're here that we hold a responsibility to enhance life, improve life, extend life, tackle what ails Kentucky, these scourges. We can make a difference in all of those things. And there are people here who work 24 seven doing that. And so for me, um, this place is holy. That's what it is.